we race. Go to NASCAR.com slash Chase Promo now and enter for a chance to win a new Chevy, Ford, or Toyota. Championship weekend continues from Miami. And right off the right off the bat, the very first thing that takes place is three championship contenders go out on the track, nose to tail. Joey Logano running the high line. Carl Edwards, he decides that he'll run right in the middle of the track. And the 48 of Jimmy Johnson chooses the bottom of the track. Yeah, all these images were from the same lap, so it shows you drivers looking at different things, and we were talking about the speed, and while they were out there working, accomplishing this team, they were just waiting. They were just paying attention to themselves, but they all went out at the same time, Steve, and this is what we saw early in this practice. Yeah, so really this is the best way, in my opinion, to compare lap times. You can look at averages, but really you have to look at the times graph. But So you see on the left side right here, you have lap times. So the goal of the screen is to be down low. This is lap one to lap 11. That's how long Carl Edwards ran, going from left to right in your screen. So Carl Edwards is the red line, Joey Logano the green line, Jimmy Johnson the blue line. So you see right here in lap one, Jimmy Johnson's clearly the fastest car on new tires. But you see as you get later out into the run, he's much slower then the 22 and the 19, and if you really look, in my opinion, the 19 of Carl Edwards consistently, basically lap three on, was the fastest of three, these three cars. And the 18 of Kyle Busch has made his way out onto the track now. And when he went out, comparative to everyone else on the track, not nearly as good. He's 28th quickest on his one lap, his first lap out there, right about 32 seconds flat, but more than likely on a different tire. Well, as far as when, when, you, when, you, when you make the decision to do this, you understand that you're not going to be able to sit down and compare your lap times to the other competitors because you have completely different track conditions. And normally when the track first opens, it's cool as it's going to be. That's when you run the best lap time. He waited. He waited a great deal of time. The track heats up. The track has less grip. You're 28 fastest, and that's that's what the team is going to say. They're going to say we're 28 fastest. We're not worried about that. What they are going to look out off at is how the car falls off compared to the other cars. But mainly what this practice is about is listening to Kyle Busch, getting the information in an effort to make the race car better. They have enough confidence in themselves not to have to just compare against lap times, but listen to Kyle Busch say, tell him, Tell Dacucci what he needs and the team to go to work to make part better. Well, and Kyle Busch is the highest of the championship for qualifying. Surprisingly, in the ninth position, they were so fast in practice, we thought we'd see all four of these cars higher up, but everyone seemed to struggle. But then after qualifying, a tremendous amount of time sitting on pit road with his crew chief, Adam Stevens, talking about the race car, looking at the pit road map, trying to understand what's best because it's not as clear when you qualify ninth. Yeah, you know, you're going to have to decide, is there a timing line you want or an opening in the end they chose pit stall 13 which is an opening behind them so right here kyle will pit in 13 which is this stall right here so there'll be an opening behind him which will allow kyle to get into the box really kind of set his own opportunity to exit because there will be a car in front of him it's the uh, 83 car but in a perfect world kyle will come in get his car pointed out so even if the 83 pits around kyle it shouldn't affect his exit but a lot of times crew chiefs will look at who's there and they'll decide okay the 83 who's jeffrey earnhardt may not be on the lead lap as often as we are so if they do come to pit road under caution that might be open as well because jeffrey earnhardt wouldn't be on the lead lap as is kyle bush but well, you have to remember the order they pick kyle bush picks first right so he's a little bit i didn't mean to interrupt you jeff but he's up to who picks in front of him so right. Right. so we're already seeing a little bit of what i would consider sportsmanship because casey kane was in front of the 83 but he didn't pick in front of kyle bush he could have to try to help Jimmy John. So I think what we're seeing is, is big companies, as, as much as they want to outrun one another, they do want it to happen on the racetrack. So a question mark of mine was pit pick. Were we going to see games on pit road? We didn't. We saw, in my opinion, the garage here had let this play out as it should. And it, listen, the other thing, we, we talk about strategy, and we talk about, you know, who has the fastest car and all those kind of things, but we just watched Kyle Busch make a, you know, 10-lap run. He never ran up against the wall. He ran the bottom of the racetrack, and that's what we saw from him yesterday as well. We haven't seen him move up the racetrack and use that extra grip. He's working on the bottom of the racetrack, and I find that very interesting. At some point today, I'm sure he's going to move up to the wall, but to this point, they have focused on making their car work around the bottom of the racetrack, and that is that is and it very that's that's a predetermined strategy coming into these practices, trying to make their car work down there. Joey Logano back out on the racetrack, Mike. 
And Rick, uh, as Jeff just mentioned, we have the luxury in television with the monitors and what have you to know where the others are running. And as you just alluded to, Jeff, Kyle Busch down on the bottom of the racetrack. Well, Joey Logano very much would be interested in having that information himself. That's what he said on the radio recently. Yeah, have you seen many guys running a wall or doing anything crazy out there? I'll just ride down everybody. The ones I see on the wall are the 1138, the 31, and the 23. There are a few others sprinkled in there, but those are the consistent ones that are on the wall. So Logano trying to handicap his competition, so to speak, understanding where they're going, where they're finding speed, so that he leaves nothing on the table. As we've seen throughout the course of this weekend so far, there's a lot of grip at the top of the racetrack, Jeff. You know that. Uh, how much will these drivers be willing to risk it to get as close to that wall as possible in order to gain that grip and that speed? Well, Mike, I think you're going to have to. I, I think that when the groove moves up the way we anticipated, uh, it's a huge difference in speed from being say six feet from the wall it'd be in six inches from the wall and i think you know the guy that has the fastest race car maybe he doesn't have to push that edge but listen you're going to have to make speed to win this championship and if running six inches from the wall is better than running a foot from the wall that's what you're ultimately going to have to do and obviously you don't want to hit the wall but you're going to have to get right on the ragged edge to win this championship it's easy to say you're high enough until one of your competitors is driving away from you you're going to try to have to get high. And where Joey's running right now, this is not. No. That, that's not hot. That's in the upper groove, but that's not the top groove. <laughs> they will get right up against the wall, as Joey Logano is doing right now. Right up there, close to the wall, the championship four, and where they are in this practice.